and hello welcome back YouTube to this video on open phone so in the last video we were trying to debug some things with regards to numerical stability we were not sure what's wrong so there were a few things I was running you know behind the scenes in the videos just to um, check what was actually wrong with this uh, simulation so you can see I have uh, experiment cost mesh LES and an experimental case LES so these are two cases which I kind of ran at the back just to uh, make sure it's stable make sure the LES case was stable but uh, now this is what I'm running now okay so I'm doing an all run serial pre and let's let's see where uh, okay all run serial pre again so this is the meshing step all right so um, let, let's uh, take a look Okay. VI system oil snap oh let's let's do the snappy X mesh dictionary again just to check the cost costness how cost this thing is. Alright, um Okay, so remember this is a level one level one kind of thing. So it's a pretty cost mesh now. And you try to run CHT multi region form. Uh we do get some sort of error. Okay, again we have some negative temperature error. Okay, for some reason. Now, uh, what could what else could be the cause? So let's again, I'll just quickly go through possible causes. This is the step. Uh, I mean, this is what debugging is about. Let's go through possible causes. So uh, we already sorted out the omega bit, and the alpha t and nu t should be as follows. Um, though for epsilon, uh, we should not have you know this epsilon wall function here. We should have it epsilon being calculated. So I'll just put this entry here to kind of do away with the entries that I've entered here because uh, open phone will just read the code one after another or change dictionary will read the code one after another. All right, so I'll just put calculated and value uh, internal field. Okay. And let's do change dictionary region oil. Okay, and we do CHT multi region form. Okay, so we have a few steps gone, and again we have uh, issue again. See this problem coming up. So, what else could it be? Um, we can also check the FV solutions if, in case the relaxation factors are, uh, under relax system or FV solution oh yes this was the entry I kind of did behind the scenes uh, also I put a relaxation factor of 0 0.3 for every single every single equation now again as you can see uh, this was the settings I used now uh, before before I changed it of course only these were um, this highlighted portion was the uh, was what was there um, now I, I put this wildcard, the dot star, means to say every every single equation will have a relaxation factor of 0 0.3. Now even with this uh, level of under relaxation, it was unable to give any sort of satisfactory results. So, uh, yeah, as you can see, you look at the minimum and maximum temperature, they're way out of bounds. So what else is next? Well, uh, one other thing is that for some reason, uh, when the time step is too small, uh, when the time step is too small, the system tends to be a bit wonky and an, an, and unstable. So I'll just put the time step to maybe one times ten to the minus three. Okay. Now, why exactly is it unstable? Um, well, perhaps because you know uh, the errors. Okay, the errors are on the order of magnitude, like, uh, how do you say? You, whenever you solve for some velocity field, all right, or some vector field or scalar field, that means it could be velocity, it could be pressure, it could be enthalpy, etc. When you, when you, so, you, when you settle, you know, when you uh, solve for fields like that, uh, and you try and uh, use small time steps, okay, what happens is that when you have very small time steps, there can be certain errors in this velo velocity field. There can be certain errors in this velocity field, 
and when your time stack is too small um, now my, my guess is this my understanding is this it's not official or anything but my understanding is this when your time step actually goes to a very very small uh, quantity you got a small time step what happens is that uh, you don't just resolve the average velocities you actually resolve the fluctuating portions of the velocity as well okay what do I mean by that uh, let's say let's say you know as in when you have turbulence when you have turbulence all right uh, you have an average velocity right and your velocity will actually fluctuate back and forth so this is the uh, V prime so to speak it will fluctuate back and forth and when you uh, make the time step very small you are more able to capture all of these small velocity fluctuations now along with these velocity fluctuations uh, it is, these things will actually cause numerical error these things will also tend to cause numerical error why? because when you when you have uh, velocity fluctuations you will introduce uh, I guess gradients you will introduce uh, new velocity gradients new velocity gradients introduce new velocity gradients okay and with these things this will uh, always introduce new error into the uh, system of equations that is trying to uh, describe your mesh and your CFD uh, CFD uh, what do you call it uh, the yeah the system of equations that the system of equations that uh, describe your CFD domain okay you're introducing new errors in there and if these errors are not able to damp out they will explode as what you are seeing there you have negative temperatures and everything and there must be certain ways to deal with to control these numerical errors okay so this is how I kind of visualize what's going on as you go very small you actually introduce new velocity gradients okay because uh, let's say you have a cell here with a velocity V here and a cell here with an average velocity also V but as you make your time step smaller the velocity here and the velocity here will differ and as a result you have some sort of gradient okay likewise for temperature likewise for pressure there will be gradients in all of these because all of these will fluctuate when you have these gradients these extra gradients uh, they can introduce new errors into the system new numerical errors these are strictly based on the solver and how does the solver deal with uh, this kind of disturbances will these uh, disturbances cause uh, errors in the system which then uh, amplify over each time step uh, if your time step is small and your system of equations is not very stable chances are you'll see what uh, what happens just now where you have a small time step and suddenly poof the the whole thing goes out of control uh, but if your time step is big enough uh, like so uh, if your time step is big enough all right if your time step is uh, big enough um, what you can do is yeah like for example I increase the time step by 100 times down to 1 times 10 to the minus 3 now if I do that uh, then uh, open form will just uh, capture all the all the uh, well it won't capture so much of this error so to speak it won't capture so much of this error because when you increase the time step all these small velocity fluctuation kind of get averaged out over time all right so if your velocity fluctuations are happening in the microseconds scale uh, if your time step is only in uh, 1 times 10 to the minus 3 or in the millisecond scale then all of these small velocity fluctuations won't be captured then you will save yourself the trouble of all these additional errors that are generated now this may or may not be good but um, especially so yeah like I was saying when you have a bigger time step, all these small little velocity on the microsecond scales will not get reflected in the millisecond scale. So this may or may not be good. Uh, it is good if you want to run a Reynolds average Navier-Stokes simulation, uh, where you want to just capture the average velocity, all right. But it's not as good if you try to run a large eddy simulation, 
Okay, large eddy simulation meaning to say I want to resolve some of these small fluctuations or if I want to do a direct numerical simulation where I'm trying to resolve all these small turbulent fluctuations in temperature, in velocity, etc. This may become a numerical stability problem and it's it will be a little bit it'll be that much harder to actually resolve these velocities due to uh, numerical errors right numerical errors so this this is the mesh by the way yeah it'll be hard to resolve the velocities due to these numerical errors which kind of amplify themselves over time uh, so uh, there may be some other steps we need to do to dampen out these errors without reducing the time step or increasing uh, the velocity sort of uh, what do you call that the velocity field I mean the the mesh size it, it should not increase the mesh size if you want to do a direct numerical simulation but if you want to do RANS, uh, Reynolds Average Navier Stokes or a coarse LES then this is completely fine so what I have here okay is uh, I mean, what I have here is this uh, is this uh, uh, I'm doing a where is this Oh, Smogorinsky. Okay, this is a Smogorinsky case. Yes, uh, this one was using a Smogorinsky. Uh, I was playing around uh, with uh, with the solvers and the settings. I wasn't sure if uh, the K Omega SST IDDES model was actually causing problems because I tried with Smogorinsky model before and it worked. And what is uh, Smogorinsky model? Uh, that is actually one of the most simple uh, LES models so um, I had a case that worked but uh, I wasn't sure I could not remember why so I, I kind of changed this setting back to Smogorinsky but now that Smogorinsky works we can test the K Omega SST IDDES model so let's uh, do CHT multi region form again and you see it works like works good it works very well so you can see that uh, basically the, the main thing was the time step. It was not the turbulence model, it wasn't the boundary conditions per se. But at least now we have something that uh, works decently and stably. I mean in a stable manner. Okay, so I'm going to change this. Move coarse mesh sphere oil LES to coarse mesh uh, sphere oil uh, K Omega SST IDD yes okay so as a bonus I'm going to give you the Smogorinsky case so move uh, case experiment case uh, LES to experiment case uh, Smogorinsky because this was a case I did earlier and it worked uh, well so you see the constant oil turbulence properties, it is a Smogorinsky case. And uh, I, I put the parental number 0 0.85, you can change it on your own. These are just template files for you to run. And if I do a all run, run serial pre, okay, this one is with a slightly finer mesh, which is uh, okay. Um, Okay, so this will take about 20 seconds to finish. Okay, so the Smogorinsky case is here for you to see. And you can see that actually works with somewhat of a finer mesh. So if I take, I show you the system snapping hex mesh dictionary, you will see the refinement cylinder being there. And I'll, you will have a level 2 refinement in the refinement cylinder and level 2 a refinement level of two all round for the sphere. So actually this fine mesh actually works. So if I run CHD multi-region foam okay you can see that these things actually run well and look at my time step it is actually 0 0.01 seconds. Okay so uh, that's that's uh, that's how you do uh, these are just some template files okay maybe I'll move I'll rename it as a uh, Smogorinsky case. Smogorinsky. Alright, so uh, 
then this thing is kind of redundant the cost mesh uh, LES the fine mesh RAS uh, is basically another my, one of my you know uh, experimental files okay but uh, I'm going to remove both of them because I, I didn't show you how I I uh, I structured them but uh, now that you roughly know how I do this K Omega SST IDDES, I can just co simply copy over this file. Cost mesh sphere oil K Omega SST IDDES cost to the cost mesh sphere oil K Omega SST. So this is the vanilla K Omega SST, the RAS model K Omega SST. All right. So there's only one thing I'm going to change. Everything else is going to stay the same. Uh, turbulence properties. I'm going to change from this to this. Okay, I'm going to use the K Omega SST model rather than the K Omega SST IDDES model. And what what you realize is that uh, actually the the syntax for both of these cases in terms of uh, making making the case work. Uh, is exactly the same the code syntax anyway the actual settings you may need to tweak it here and there because both of these are funda fundamentally different models uh, but by and large in terms of the in the way you input the information to open form it is more or less the same so if I run CHD multi-region form it will run exactly the same way I did not even need to change anything in the FE solutions uh, files or any thing like that okay so it is actually not too bad uh, so I just want to clean this all up I want to clean all of this up so let's go to case Margorinsky and I want to clean all of this up okay and I want to go to the course mesh sphere oil K Omega SST all clean Cosmos Fear Oil, K Omega SST, IDDS, all clean. Alright, DUSH star. Okay, most of these are very, pretty small, so I'm not going to bother uh, dealing with this too much. Alright, so git add. Git, okay, time is up, I should not take too long. Uh, K Omega SST and Smagorinsky case added are all stable. Okay, numerically stable. So I go to git push and go to enter my username and password. And see, it's a very small size. Okay. So next, next thing on the list is probably. You know, uh, I want to check out what's the, what is the, uh, you know, what is the, what do you call that? What is the, oh, heat transfer coefficient as you run it over time. Of course, uh, it'll be a lot easier if I do, it'll be a lot faster if I just run all of this in parallel, but I'm not going to run in parallel, I'm just going to run in series. So let's go course smash sphere all okay, k omega sst idd yes and I'm gonna do all run okay maybe I'll do all run parallel see whether that works hey okay, hold on looks like that didn't work too well Let's see the CHD multi region foam. Okay, so alright, looks like the, the parallel case is not uh, set up properly yet. So I'll have to do that another time. Well, I can do our run serial, no problem. Alright, I'll run serial. Pre and CHD multi region foam and so I just run this consecutively one after another and hopefully we can talk about uh, we can talk about uh, what do you call that uh, results
let's see whether I have a post processing here and uh, in the oil yes I have an average sphere heat transfer coefficient and surface field surface value field surface field value data okay apparently um, doesn't look like it's working too well now but let's see, let me check my wall heat flux okay looks like uh, I have a wall heat flux which is at least some some semblance of uh, data I need okay so at least this is here all right hopefully next time uh, I'll have all my data ready then we can do some sort of comparison uh, plot it out on graph uh, plot it out in Excel etc etc so thanks for watching I'll see you guys again bye bye